What's going on guys, Balkan Architects here and in today's video we're doing something a bit different. We're going to be talking about architecture salaries and how much do architects make. So in 2019 the average salary for architects was $6,783 per month. That making it a 81 grand per year. So that was a an average salary in the US. Now, uh, that doesn't mean that any architect can make $6,000. Uh, salaries, uh, salaries go from uh, 3000 on the low end up to almost 12000 uh, a month on the high end. Now, uh, how much money you make can be determined by many different factors. And of course, keep in mind that depending on where you live and if you live outside of the US, your salary may be way different. For example, I live in Serbia, which is on the Balkans, uh, in Europe and here uh, when you finish school uh, you can find jobs that are paying as low as like $300 a month and then maybe a decent beginning job would pay you around $500 a month and then senior architects with a lot of work experience can get over $2,000 a month. So uh, I wanted to talk uh, during this video not only about how much architects make but some tips and tricks on how can you earn more as an architect and what determines the uh, height or uh, of, of your salary. So the, the first thing that you might have noticed there when I talked about the salary in the US and in my country and that's location. So location will determine how much money you're making in any field or most fields and uh, the same is for architecture. So for example, uh, just in the US, if you're living in New York or Mas Massachusetts, your uh, salary might be a bit higher than somebody living in a different state. So keep this in mind. Uh, uh, maybe it would be a good idea to move in order to get a high, higher paying job if that's something that you need. Uh, also, what's really important is the type of job that you're doing as an architect. So not every architect does a same job and architecture our architects can do a wide variety of jobs. Uh, what I found was the that the architects that uh, work outside on the field or on, on kind of project locations tend to earn a bit more money than uh, the architects that work uh, in offices just because uh, the, the jobs are uh, more demanding but also these jobs are for people that do have some uh, some experience so you can't just come out of the school knowing nothing about construction sites and then be like yeah please give me a lot of money I, I want to work as an architect in the field so you can't do that you do require some experience first uh, now let's talk about design architects first because that's what everybody wants to do everybody wants to be Frank Gehry, Zaha Hadid, uh, Bjarke Ingels or uh, name any other star architect so uh, design architects can make a lot of money if they are senior design architects. So usually for design architects teams work like that. You have a senior architect and then you have a bunch of uh, junior architects that are just good with software and they kind of try to replicate whatever the senior architects want to make inside of software. So uh, if you're a junior design architect you might make uh, not that much money just because these uh, jobs are very uh, uh, very competitive so uh, people uh, want these jobs because they're doing exactly what everybody dreams about doing in architecture school you dream about designing a house so uh, just because these are very desirable jobs uh, they tend to be paid a little bit less again as, as I said if you are a junior architect if you are a senior architect don't worry you're going to make tons of money so uh, that's for design architects. Now if you are a production architect, so if your job is to take the design from the design architect and then produce project documentation, uh, solve all of the details, fix all of the errors, make sure that everything is up to code, now that can pay a bit more. Now keep in mind that you don't have as much creativity but if you are maybe a bit more technology oriented or construction oriented this can be a very fun job for you. Now another thing Thing that I really think is beneficial for these types of jobs not only the higher pay but also you learn the whole design process so maybe in a few years if you want to uh, start your own practice or work as a solo architect you you understand the whole process so from the design 
all the way to complete uh, project documentation. Whereas design architects, they only know how to do the general design and then they leave it up to the production uh, architects to kind of complete the project documentation. So keep that in mind. Now also I would recommend that you don't uh, only have your main architecture job, but it's always useful to have sort of a side hustle. I started this whole YouTube channel as a side hustle and it's been uh, doing great. I've, I've had tons of fun just creating these tutorials and it was, well, quite useful. So uh, for side hustles, you can either do the exact same job that you're doing just on the side as a solo practitioner, but also you can do some different jobs that can be beneficial for your career. So let me explain what I'm talking about. Let's say you're uh, you're an architect and you, I don't know, you're a design architect, but you also love architecture photography. So you can take uh, photos of uh, architecture and then sell those as stock photography. Uh, this is a cool way to use your hobby to make some extra cash on the side and it's still something that you can place on your resume and make yourself a, a bit more desirable as an employee just because it's something that uh, people like to see. You can also enter design companies competitions, maybe do some uh, furniture design or something like that. You can uh, maybe create a digital or a physical product that you can sell. Now I recommend digital products just because they're all the rage now, but of course you can make physical products, maybe some uh, parts of the interior or something like that. You can sell that online, that can be useful uh, as well. Or you can do maybe some just design services, maybe work on some interior designs and things like that. And also when it comes to money, I suggest you start working for yourself as soon as possible. Now working for yourself is not only going to give you a higher salary after a while, in the beginning it's going to be terrible, but after a while when you get a, a few clients, you start working, you are going to start earning more money than you would as an architect uh, that's employed in some firm. Also uh, just working for yourself is going to give you a lot more freedom than you, than you would have as an employee anywhere in the world. So that's also useful. So that's something that I suggest. And when it comes to starting your own business, I know it can be hard in the beginning, so I would like to give you just one tip, and that's to uh, kind of go with trends. Now, don't get this the wrong way. When it comes to clothing, going with the trends can be a terrible idea. But when it comes to business, following some of the latest trends can be really useful. Now, the reason for that is you associate yourself with a popular trend and then you can use that in order to ca catapult your business. So, for example, uh, in the last few years, uh, smart homes are all the rage. Just all of the technology for smart ho homes has become uh, quite cheap. So what you can do is you can start a practice as an interior designer that specializes in smart homes. So for example, you do architecture that's all around this smart home technology. So you've associated yourself with this new trend and then you can just follow that trend along and let it catapult you up the business ladder. So just try to find what's popular lately and then you can use that to uh, catapult your career. Now, another thing that you can use, of course, in order to make more money uh, and to make yourself a bit more uh, competitive is to learn extra software. So uh, if you know or if you are a master at a certain uh, software, it's going to make you more desirable to companies. It's going to make you more efficient as an architect just because maybe you can go through different designs a lot quicker and um, maybe you can save a lot of time when it comes to uh, producing your project information and all of that. So I, I, I warmly suggest you learn some extra software on the side and just master one piece of software that's desirable. Now, of course, I would recommend Revit, but you don't have to do it if you don't want to, but I do suggest it. So anyways, that's, that, that's something else that you can do in order to, uh, I guess, make yourself a little bit more uh, competitive on the market. Okay, so those are some of my tips on how to make more money as an architect. And uh, in the beginning of the video, I shared some basic information on the average salary that architects make, well, at least in the US. But in the rest of the world, uh, it, it might be lower of, or higher depending off on your location. So uh, that's, that's the situation. Uh, we're in today. 
Okay, so I hope you have learned something new and I hope that these tips might come in useful in your architecture career. Uh, thank you for watching. Make sure to like this video and subscribe and to share this video just because it helps me out with the YouTube algorithm. And also, if you're interested in Revit tutorials, well, that's all that I do on this channel. So make sure to, to subscribe because uh, I, I make useful Revit tutorials each week. And if you want some advanced uh, courses on Revit, I do have those as well. So check out my Patreon, first link down below in the description of this video. There you can find over 45 hours of content on some of the advanced uh, topics in Revit. So if you're interested in something like that, make sure to check it out. Okay, so thank you for watching and I'll be back with another uh, Revit tutorial in a couple of days. Have a nice day.